Today we're going to talk about the stole takeoff. And as we talk about this stole takeoff, what you'll find is there will be no answers. Just more questions and grounds for discussion and thoughts. Aviation, the way it was meant to be. Scooter with the Great Michigan Bush Company. And today we're here to talk about uh, takeoffs. That's a uh, and let's talk specifically about short takeoffs. What I am is just an aviation enthusiast who spent a little bit of time practicing getting in and out of backcountry strips, or at least uh, Michigan farm field strips. And uh, when we look at takeoffs, I like to think about uh, three things. One are the non-pilot variables. The second would be the aircraft variables. And the third are your techniques. So first of all, let's look at the, uh, at the non-pilot variables. First one is field conditions. You know, is, uh, is the field dirt? Is it asphalt? Is it grass? If it's grass, how long is the grass? Anything that's gonna slow down your acceleration is going to increase your takeoff rollover. So we wanna minimize that. We also wanna look at the slope. Does it slope up or does it slope down? Obviously a downward slope is going to make for a, a shorter takeoff run. And while the probably on pill is going to be a, a longer takeoff roll. We also can then look at wind. We all know a headwind is going to decrease our takeoff distance, and we're well aware of that, taught that from day one. But a tailwind will more greatly decrease your takeoff performance than a headwind increases it. Do we take off downhill with a tailwind? Uh, what's going to be the shortest? We need to assess field conditions and then come up with a plan that will give us the shortest uh, takeoff distance. Something else we need to think about is our uh, is our altitude, and we know that high altitude will decrease our um, takeoff performance. We also know that density altitude will have the same effect. High temperatures increase density altitude. We know high altitudes increase density altitude. What people don't think about is humidity. Humidity also increases density altitude. A high humidity will have an effect. Uh, if we take a 90 degree temperature with high humidity, 90 plus percent humidity, we'll have a density altitude at sea level of about 2,500 feet. We take that same sea level altitude, 90 degree temperature, and we dry the air out, low humidity, we'll have a 2,000 foot density altitude. While people may take into account the temperature and its effect with density altitude, a lot of people don't think about the humidity. So those are the primary non-pilot variables. The next thing we're going to look at is aircraft variables. Uh, the first one is going to be our power plant. The bigger engine will produce more horsepower. More horsepower will shorten our takeoff roll. When you buy your airplane, it comes with an engine, and most people stick with that engine. Even if you decide not to upgrade your engine, maintaining your engine to the highest standards will still have a good effect on your takeoff distance. Uh, we have propellers. In general, a finer pitch propeller will increase your acceleration, decreasing takeoff roll. The finest pitch propeller that their aircraft's type certificate allows for, uh, that will give you the shortest takeoff distance. You can also, depending on your airplane, put a constant speed prop. With a variable pitch propeller, you're going to have added weight, and a CG shift forward. Uh, so some of this can be uh, a balance. Do you want to add the extra weight? Which brings up another variable and that's weight. Weight is a huge aircraft variable. Uh, to me, it's the place you should go first. A lighter weight aircraft needs to produce less lift. Less lift with the same wing can be made at a slower airspeed. And if you can take off at a slower airspeed, you can get off the ground shorter. There's a lot of things we can do to reduce the weight in your airplane. Lightweight interiors, lightweight starters, lightweight generators, battery weight. Losing that weight is going to be a huge decrease in takeoff distance. <laughs> Another way we can decrease our takeoff distance with some airplanes, especially tailwheel airplanes, would be bigger tires. <laughs> I found a reason for bigger tires. Bigger tires look good. They also 
increase our deck angle while sitting on the ground. So I know that my Stinson has a 12 degree deck angle right now, but the aircraft stalls at a 16 degree angle of attack. In other words, at 15 degrees, the airplane's flying with the proper forward airspeed, but I can only get 12. This means to produce the amount of lift, I have to go faster. So if I could bring my deck angle up to 15 degrees, I could then be producing enough lift at a slower airspeed and take off shorter. So let's say uh, 31 inch tires would definitely help my airplane get off the ground shorter. But my eight and a half inch tires weigh 10 pounds versus those 31 inch tires well, they weigh 30 pounds a piece. So what's the, where's the benefit? Is it the decrease in weight or the increase in my deck angle as I go down the runway to get, get the better angle of attack for takeoff? But there's a reason for tires. I guarantee you go from seven inch to eight and a half or even 26 inch, you're gonna notice a difference in your takeoff roll if you have a tailwheel airplane. The other aircraft variable would be high lift devices. VGs are one, inexpensive and they work. Watch the video, I'll connect it to a tag up here. It made a difference in my airplane as far as, uh, uh, you know, stall speed. Decrease stall speed, I can take off, produce lift at a lower air speed, I take off shorter. Uh, you have flaps, you know, larger flaps. You have wingtip extensions, slots. You can add slats. Well, all three will decrease your takeoff distance, but what, what you'll notice is the first one gives you the biggest performance benefit, and then each one is diminishing returns. If, if VGs save you five knots and slats save you five knots, you put them together, you don't get 10 knots. You probably get something more like six or seven knots. With the aircraft variables, to me, the first thing you do is attack the weight and lower the weight of your aircraft. Then you uh, add your high lift devices. But that's uh, going to be well, pilot specific. Next, we'll take a look at pilot techniques. The first one is tail low. Now, the tail low technique is, uh, is a simple technique. Advance the throttle, hold your brakes. Once you reach full throttle, release your brakes. Start down the runway and just lift your tail wheel up maybe an inch off the ground. You're just looking to Get rid of the tailwheel drag. Keep that three-point attitude until the aircraft lifts. Transition into ground effect. Once you hit best angle, climb out at best angle. The second pilot technique is tail high. Gonna do the same thing, advance the throttle, hold our brakes. Once we re reach full power, release the brakes. Uh, the aircraft will accelerate. When we can lift, the tail to a level attitude. We lift that tail to a level attitude. And once we reach the correct takeoff speed, we pull the airplane into the air. We know we have timed it correctly, but if the tail wheel touches the ground, just as the mains leave, that's gonna be your highest performance takeoff. Uh, it takes a little more practice and there's some room for error. If you pull early, the tail wheel will bounce on the ground and uh, your takeoff roll will be substantially increased. Again, the, the technique takes a little more practice, uh, but it helps protect your tail uh, from debris as you roll down the runway from your tires or your propeller. And, uh, and a lot of people think it does shorten your takeoff roll. The third technique is a tail high technique, but when you pull the aircraft in the air, you then Pull your flaps to full and as you transition to ground effect you set your flaps back down to your uh, climb flaps accelerate the best angle and then climb out this technique uh, many people believe allow you to pull the aircraft into the air at a shorter distance and then once you're in the air your acceleration is fast if you have a bigger engine, you may not even have to put the nose down and stay in ground effect. It may accelerate the best angle. Uh, leave a comment below telling me your favorite pilot technique for uh, short field takeoffs. I'd love to hear what you do and you know what you've been successful with. Give us a thumbs up if you like this stuff. Thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you in the skies.
There's my RPM, and we release. Just a little bit, not too much. There we go, just like that. And then the airplane should just come off the ground. There we go, we're off. And that's your tail low. Now, I do believe that's going to be your most consistent. I'm not quite treetop height, but treetop height there at right around 1,000 feet. Full power. There it is, release. Right about here, I get the tail up, tails up. And then, I think right about here. There it is, yep, and the tail bounced, and I'm in the air, now I'm in ground effect, there's my best rate, and I rotate up. Alright, release the brakes. Tail low, tail high. There it is. I have no idea which one was quicker.